What is going on, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. After Sound here, bringing you Splinterlands content every single day. We also stream right here on this channel every Tuesday, Thursday, and Sunday morning. So come by and say hello. All right, guys, I want to talk about the new proposal, obviously, from Matt. Uh, there's been a lot of discussion about it already, and that is the one to add that wild season pass. And I wanted to address uh, one of the criticisms that I've seen uh, quite heavily in terms of it's not going to deter bot farms if the ROI is still there. Meaning that, you know, if bot farms are able to continue to earn, then they will continue to operate. And even more so, let's say they decide to consolidate further, it'll still be the same amount of extraction that will happen. Uh, it's just, it'll happen from fewer accounts, right? And it'll be much more worthwhile for, for these bot accounts to, or bot farms, let's say to go from like 10,000 accounts to 2000 accounts or wh whatever the numbers are. Right. Uh, but they will still be extracting the same amount of value, of course, minus whatever the, the wild season passes. So I I'm looking at that and, you know, looking at where we're at from an overall like DEC supply standpoint. And I, I respectfully disagree with that analysis. And the main reason is because if the bot farms continue to operate because it's profitable, that's actually not a bad thing. Because again, the incentives for bots, whether the bots consolidate and level up or whether they stay at the lower levels, uh, th those incentives are the same as they are for, for people, right? And so you want the game in, to a certain extent to be enticing in that way. Now, is that sustainable long term? No, probably not. And I think we're going to go through periods just like we've seen over the last couple of years here where it's profitable and then it's not. It's profitable and then it's not all depending on where, you know, maybe the value of DEC is at, where the price of SPS is at, uh, the price of assets overall, right? So it's, it's going to be something that's dynamically moving around. But the reason I think it's a net positive overall is because let's say it, this thing gets implemented day one and nothing changes. The bots continue to run because the bots are making more than a buck 50, right? Or whatever it is. They still have to pay the wild season pass. That wild season pass is going to be or permit, whatever you want to call it. Um, that is almost like a forced burning as a requirement to access the rewards in wild format. And so, sure, we, we can go with, you know, Matt's numbers of, you know, maybe 20% of the current active accounts. So 15,000 accounts that play in wild 50 battles or more, 30 million DEC per season, right? I mean, again, that's, that's significant. 60 million DEC a month. Look at where we're at over the past month. We're flat. And if you look at this chart here, you know, ever since we, we got to, uh, I, I guess it was whenever the, uh, the burning of all that gladiator stuff happened that uh, pushed everything up. And then of course the liquidity pools uh, were no longer incentivized. The DEC liquidity pools. We haven't, we haven't really changed. We've been at about 5.7 billion for two months. This chart is about is 120 days, right? So it's been almost two months, right? We, we saw a little dip here, which is fake. So keep that in mind. This is fake because a lot of that DEC left the ecosystem to go into the, um, Green DECLP, and then you can see here there's a note May 21 that supply was fixed, so that pushed us right back up. And right now we're still at 5.703 billion. Now, what's interesting is you're like, okay, well, we're obviously burning a little bit every day. I think we're, I think our rate is roughly 1 million DEC that we're burning a day just through market fees. Maybe that's come down a little bit, but you can also see that you know SPS is still being burnt ever so slightly. Um, so, you know, it's just like a couple thousand or tens of thousands that get burned every day, which is not a lot, but you know, ultimately it's, it's still the net positive overall. So that's, that's a little bit of an aside. What I'm trying to get at here is if we implement this and it's still profitable for all of these bots to play, yes, their profits will take a hit, but more importantly, we are going to start tearing through a ton of the excess DEC in the ecosystem. And if DEC gets back to its intended peg, right, 1,000 DEC per dollar, all of a sudden that that's going to translate into burning SPS. So what am I trying to what am I trying to get at by this? Even if it's still profitable for bots and bots are still extracting or people are still extracting, however you want to look at it, right? At the end of the day, the forced burn of DEC, or maybe vouchers, right? Although vouchers are, are much more indirect uh, in terms of their impact on SPS, um, will raise the value of SPS over time, right? First, clear out the DEC and then activate the flywheel that we saw a little preview of towards the end of last year when Rebellion came out and, uh, and Land came out. 
So right now, there's nothing that's burning DEC at a major rate the way that we had when you know those two events happened at the end of 2023. And while you know this isn't going to be hundreds of millions of DEC in a day or a month, uh, it will be still a significant amount. I mean, I don't know, maybe maybe more <laughs> bots will be online. Maybe they'll find it, uh, you know, appealing. And as we go along with this, you know, one of the things that Matt and the team talked about was how can they provide incentives. And I, I talked about this a little bit in one of the previous videos, but like, what if there were some cool, like wild only prizes that, that you could access? I mean, even for people that have no interest in playing wild because they only have modern cards, if they wanted to go chase those prizes and maybe they're not, maybe they're even just soul bound prizes. I don't even know. Right. But it's just like something fun in the game that you want to try uh, or, or that you want to have you know, people will look at that and be like, oh, a buck 50, two bucks to go and like play one season in wild. Let me, let me go give it a try. And then all of a sudden you have people, you know, going back and forth between the different formats. And again, it, it just comes down to that forced burn. Now, is it going to be 30 million DEC per season, 60 million DEC per month? I, I've, I've said before that I highly doubt that we've looked at the numbers, you know, that the daily active accounts tends to trend like below 20,000, sometimes even below 15,000. So I, I, again, I would think that if you're going to be cutting into the profit for said bots, it would probably be in their best interest to consolidate or I, I don't know that they're going to turn off, but you know, consolidate and continue to uh, maximize their, their earnings and their returns over time. So it may not be 30 million right away, but whatever it ends up being it's going to be something, you know, it's going to be something significant because it just doesn't exist right now, right? Um, and so with all that DEC burning, this could actually go on forever. And and this is what I'm trying to get at here. The scourge of bots, right? Now, I, I'm being hyperbolic and uh, almost sarcastic. But like bot farms could actually still come back in mass if the incentives align appropriately even with the wild format permit. And what I mean by that is, okay, let's say, you know, let's say um, the, the ROI for playing right now, right? Based on what you, the bots need to hold, uh, own or rent or whatever the case is. Um, you know, we, again, I've seen a bunch of calculations, but just to keep things easy, let's say that, you know, they're, they're able to make X and they only have to pay Y, right? In terms of rentals plus the wild season permit. And so therefore they're able to keep that Delta, right? X minus Y, which is a positive number. Let's say that they continue to do that over time. And as we collectively, bots and humans and anybody in the community, burn more DEC, get us back to a place where we actually go DEC negative in terms of what you know the equilibrium is for, for the ecosystem, where, a place where we go DEC negative or DEC above peg, meaning that we start burning SPS, SPS starts to become more scarce, those same bots are still online, still earning at that level, and here's where it starts to get interesting. Well, all of a sudden, the price of SPS starts to go up. And if we hit 2.4 cents, that's a 2x from where we're at right now, 2.4, 2.5 cents, right? And all of a sudden, they have, well, maybe not quite doubled their profits, but they've definitely, I mean, it would actually probably even be more than double their profits, right? Because they were earning 1.2 SPR, you know, 1.2 uh, in terms of the value of SPS. Now they're going to be earning double that, right? While, have, while keeping their costs relatively the same. Now, again, those costs will be dynamic too, right? So maybe the cost of renting SPS goes up as the price of SPS goes up. Maybe, maybe if the team is effective in terms of getting uh, more players to come check out the game, you get into a situation where the cost of renting cards or owning cards starts to go up. But all I'm trying to say is that assuming none of that happens for a while, let's say, you know, uh, we're able to start moving the price of SPS or SPS starts moving with the rest of the market. If the market starts picking up over the summer or in Q3, Q4, even if that happens and nobody else is coming in to check out the game, if SPS starts going up, well, then all of a sudden the bot farms that are currently on or even just people with all the cons are going to look at that and be like, wait a second, I like I can I can still earn more, right? Because now the, the, the delta, that X minus Y is high or higher than it was before. So that could actually bring more bots in to the ecosystem or more, I, I shouldn't even say bots, but just more accounts into the ecosystem because the earnings are so good, right? So this is this is going to be kind of like a free and open market that's very dynamic in terms of, you know, where where the ROI is at. And that's that's kind of what it's always been to a certain extent. And what I'm trying to say is that the wild season permit 
doesn't actually change anything in terms of those incentives. Yes, it adds a little bit of a hurdle in there, but that hurdle to me is a huge net positive for the ecosystem that could actually help us even with all the bots right now, and even if the bots remain profitable, help us actually to overcome the DEC overhang that we have and start creating direct SPS demand, pushing that price up higher because of the fact that we are required to burn DEC for these uh, these permits, right? And yeah, I, vouchers vouchers will be required to burn them too, but um, you know that's I, or people will have the choice of DEC and vouchers. Right now, obviously, vouchers are ideal. But my my thought and my my hope, right? I have no idea. I'm not trying to make any predictions here. But my thought is that vouchers will probably be the first thing to get back up to you know whatever their their soft peg is, which would be about five cents, just because it makes it makes way more sense for people to use that. But once that's done, if there's continued demand on that, right, then we will see all that start to translate over to DEC. And keep in mind, 15,000 players a season in wild. I, I, I keep going back to that number because it's it's ideal. 15,000 players playing in wild burns the exact amount of vouchers minted every single day. So if we can maintain a consistent sixteen or 15,000 players playing in wild format over the course of the season, right? It doesn't have to be daily, but like they play a couple battles here and there and you just have folks that are participating or uh, it doesn't even need to be participating. They just need to be willing to pay for the wild season permit. If you, if we get that at 15,000 vouchers, vouchers in my opinion are like, we will never go above a certain amount, right? In fact, well, vouchers will start to be a net negative or people will start to focus on, on DEC. Uh, which again is where we're trying to get to. So that's my quick thoughts. I wasn't really that quick, but th those are my thoughts on uh, the the criticism towards the proposal. I, I still think that it's a net positive overall. I know a lot of people aren't necessarily uh, feeling it still, but I just wanted to explain that perspective uh, in case you had heard or were confused about some of the criticism being laid out. Again, I'm not saying that I'm right or that I, you know, it's just, I, this is the way that I'm looking at it. And to me, that's what makes the most sense. So let me know your thoughts in the comments below. That's all I have. Otherwise, I'll catch you all in the next one and see you around the game. Take care.